as a fan sitting back and following your career is that it, you don't really care who you fight. Am I wrong about that? I mean, I remember when they threw you in there with Eddie, and I want to say you only had three or four fights at that time. They threw you back in there with Eddie. I mean, you guys got fight of the year. It was amazing. The Will Brooks, the Will Brooks again, into Benson Henderson. It seems like you're a go-to guy that comes from a competitive background that just wants to compete. Am I wrong about Are you a pain in the ass behind the scenes, and yeah. I just don't know it? No, absolutely not. I, mean, I think, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, you, you just have to have this kind of, for me, it's an attitude of gratitude. I mean, we, we, if you think about what we get to do for a living, we get to go out there and punch people in the face Five. for a living. We get to stay in shape for a living. We get to fight for a living. People mm -hmm. want to be in our That's position. Fun. People want to tune in to Spike TV. They want to buy the mm -hmm. news. They want to get off book on Fox. They want to watch these fights that, that we are in. We are professional athletes. I mean, what... What, what better in life, what, what better career path is it for, for a guy like yourself who came through the wrestling ranks to, hey man, when Jordan Burroughs was in my bracket, and if I, I won my quarterfinals match and, he, and I had to meet him in the semis, I couldn't say, hey, no, I've got to fight this other, I've got to wrestle this other guy. No, you, you lay the three up. You, you go up there, you go out there, and you, and you, uh, you face the best guy Seven. on the planet. And uh, that's just kind of the, the background and mentality that I have, much like yourself. I mean, we're not going to shy away from fights, yeah. Yeah, sometimes could, could I maybe have made better decisions and maybe should I have, quote unquote, maybe picked better fights for myself, my style, my, my career, my stock? Yeah, absolutely. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't be able to put my head on the pillow at night and sleep peacefully knowing that I'm not trying to fight the best guys in this organization. I want to fight Benson Henderson to be the best guy in this division. I want to fight Josh Thompson because he's one of the biggest names in this division. I'm calling out Warren McDonald because he's the newest and biggest biggest name in that one one to seventy roster. I'm not here to tiptoe around and, and uh, you know barely win fights and, and fight guys that I know I can beat. I'm I'm, a, I'm here to slay the Goliath for the world. I want the biggest the biggest matchup, the biggest fight possible and you know you know as well as I do, not every single fight is a big fight. So you have to make it a big fight and you have to find the biggest fights and you have to go out and grab the bull by the horns and, and go out there and put, and put on a good show. Thank you. Oh my Nine God, thank you for saying, see that, and I feel the same way. It's like, you know, you're talking about you've had almost 20 fights. Yeah, you could go back and do your career and make sure you were 20 and oh, but how are you going to respect yeah. yourself? Uh, you know, then, you're, then what, you're a bully that's picking your fight? I, I don't get that. If you jump into a division, you got to take anyone on in the division. It's it's that same way as, the, you know, the tournaments that you grew up doing uh, in a wrestling format. You don't know who's going to show up oh, that day. Fuck. And then even once they show up, it's a bracket, so you don't know who's going to advance to the quarters or to the semis or to the championship. You have no idea, but whoever steps out there, you walk out there against. And yeah, maybe they don't all go well, but that's what it should be. It, you shouldn't be in this bully situation where you're picking and choosing. You know, boxers have done that for so long. I love the sport of boxing. I don't mean to bag on it, but I do resent them for doing it. Put the, you, you go pick on the next guy, whoever it is, and if it means you're going to lose, if your skills aren't as good as it, then it means you're going to lose. And you go out there and you take it like a man and you grow from it. But yeah, what, what's with these guys, man? It's hard as a fan, Michael, to sit back and watch these guys picking and choosing their fights. Just go out there and compete. Two, two. Nine, Absolutely, two, yeah. And, and two. I think that's what this sport was, was built on. And, this, and that's, that was the, the essence of the beginning of the sport. You know, hey, who's, who's better? Does karate, does karate beat boxing? Does boxing beat wrestling? Does wrestling beat jiu-jitsu? Does this, this, that, and the other thing? And now, you know, now it's, it's become such a mainstream sport that people are trying to protect themselves. People are a little bit afraid of, of uh, certain oh. matchups, and, and certain guys know that they, they have a deficiency on the ground, so they're going to try to fight, uh, you know, stand-up guys. Or they have a deficiency on the, in the stand-up, so they're going to try to fight uh, this guy or that guy. And it's just... It's a, it, it's a little bit of a shame, but you know, it, it, I think it's part of the growing pains of the sport. But at the end of the day, there's still there's still many many guys like us cut from cut from our cloth that are in this sport who are going to go out there, fight the fight down and not be out there and get to a war. Whether whether he's number one in the world or he's number eighty in the world, you're going to go out there and you're going to fight and you're going to put it all on the line because you know that at the end of the day, at some point, you're going to have to look back on your career and say. Did I or didn't I put everything that I could into the sport? Did I or didn't I work as hard as I possibly could? Or did I or did I not, you know, sacrifice these gifts that I was given? And for me, I train so hard, I believe in myself, I surround myself with the right people, I do every single thing right, so why shouldn't I go out there and beat the best guys in the world? Why shouldn't I challenge myself against the best guys in the world? And 
I've, I've taken my, my lumps and my bruises, and I lost three fights in a row, and I went 688 days without a win. Not many people have had to go through that and come back from what I've had to come back from. So, to me, my story is my story, and my journey is, is going to be one that I think people are going to remember for, for many different reasons. But, you know, I, I came through some adversity, and, and now here I am back at the top fighting, you know, one of the best guys in the world, and I'm excited to continue this road to the top. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, all the way from day one, you know, when we go back and, and talk about your Alvarez fight, which seems like yesterday to me, it, I think we're going all the way back to, like, 2012. It seems like you just got out of the ring with Eddie. In fact, when you said you had almost 20 fights, that, that blew my mind. Because I always think of you as one of, one of these newer guys in there, but you jumped in so fast. I mean, you jumped into the deep end so quick in your career. Let me ask you this. You're a wrestler at Missouri. At what point did you realize... When I'm done with college, this is what I want to do. I want to go into MMA. What, what inspired you? Um, you know, it, it wasn't until later in my career. It, it really wasn't until going into my senior year that I even thought about it. You know, I mean, I think I think we kind of have this one-track mind where if I'm a wrestler, I'm going to focus on wrestling. If I'm focused on wrestling, I'm focused on getting better, and I'm focused on becoming a national champion. So it was hard for me to think about that next step, but wrestling with Tyron Woodley and having him be like a, an older brother and mentor and coach to me. Wrestling with Ben Ashton being like an older brother and mentor to me. These, those two guys are, are, are the guys that really kind of give me an opportunity to look in the mixed martial arts direction because Tyron started fighting and he fought a bunch of amateur fights and then finally started fighting the strike force and then Ben came right out started fighting pro and, and I saw these guys starting to make a living and started to make a little bit of money and started to make a, an actual career path for themselves and you know, I think I was just at a transitional period where I loved the sport of wrestling, but I didn't necessarily want to continue the sport of wrestling. I, did, I didn't, I didn't want to become a coach and then and try to fight uh, wrestle on that Olympic circuit. I think I just, I started being pushed in that direction because I had mentors who were doing it, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna hop into a stage and get in a pro fight and, and see how it feels, see, see if I feel at home in there, see if that competition. Is, is is what I what I want because I knew I still wanted to have competition. I just wasn't sure if it was going to be wrestling, if it was going to be fighting, or what it was going to be. But you know, I had my first full fight in August of 2009, so it was four months, three months after I graduated college, and uh, haven't looked back since. Got my first my first win, my first uh, first round finish TKO, and said, man, this, this is something that I definitely want to pursue. And it, you know, like every fighter, it's it's, uh, it's small small paycheck. A lot of training, a lot of a lot of grinding, just like the wrestling days. It's, it's very, very little glory until you finally get, you know, to your contract. And then, uh, you know, then I got the Belgio contract and got the opportunity to fight Eddie Alvarez, who's top five in the world. Yeah, hey, when you're talking about Eddie, by the way, what's going to happen with him and Connor? Who, who do you got in that fight? I have Eddie. You know, I think, obviously, you know, I, I can attest to Eddie's power, his tenacity, his, his cardio, his his, his composure inside the cage. I spent nearly 50 minutes with that guy inside the cage. We have we have, uh, we have spilled more blood uh, with each other than, than a lot of people will will do in, in, in an entire career. You know uh, the world that we were in. And I, I have a ton of respect for that guy. And I think I think Connor's Connor's only good when he's confident and when he's, he's in his flow, when he's in, when he's in his Connor kind of movement state, you know. And, and I think it, it shows in the first round, he's going he's gonna to be throwing at his spinning stuff, he's going to dig to the body, he's going to throw, he's gonna throw that, that devastating left hand. And, and I think when when he realizes he rocks Eddie, and Eddie uh, recuperates, and Eddie comes back, and Eddie gets right back to his feet, and, and just like he has in so many fights, both fights that I were in, I rocked him numerous times, and he keeps fighting, he keeps coming, he has an undominated will. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see um, how Connor reacts to that. We saw the Connor that we saw in the first two rounds in the Nate Diaz fight, uh, their second fight, the first two rounds, uh, compared to the last couple. Now I give credit to Connor for, for I think exceeding a lot of our expectations. A lot of us thought that he was just gonna his cardio was just gonna tank and he was gonna and gas out and lose again, but he stuck it out for a full five rounds. I think Eddie has more composure, better composure, better fist striking, better wrestling, better grappling, better all around complete mix of mixed martial arts techniques than uh, than Diaz does. So I think Eddie comes away with it with either a late finish, third, fourth, or fifth round, um, or even.
I see it that same way. And the, and the one thing about Eddie is nobody's kicking that guy's ass. And, and they might beat him. You're a guy that can attest. There's ways to beat Eddie. There's ways to eat up the time and win some, some judges. But nobody's coming out and steamrolling Eddie Alvarez. Nobody. It's not going to happen. It has never happened. And that's one of Connor's biggest things. He overwhelms guys. And when that storm's done, nobody's left standing. But I, got, I have to assume that Eddie will still be standing. And all of a sudden, you're in those later rounds. And... It changes. Things change. Yeah, that's that's when the fight really starts, and and, and I can attest to that. I, I was that guy who, you know, before that Eddie Alvarez, my, my first 12 fights, I had 10 first round finishes. You know, first round finishes, stepping in the cage, fight was done within within four minutes on average. You know, so you get used to going out there and chemo and guys, and then all of a sudden you Whoa, get you get those wars where. Yeah where you're giving a guy your best shot, your your uh, your heart rate is through the roof, your adrenaline is pumping, your uh, you know, the lactic acid is building, then the war stuff. Anybody can go out there and land a sweet, beautiful, swift punch on the chin, knock someone out, jump up on the cage and say, you know, give me my paycheck and let's go on to the next one. But when you get into those deep waters, you either sink or you swim. And uh, you know, like I said, you gotta give credit to Connor. He, he showed he showed his heart in his first Diaz fight what we thought was his heart, and, you know, basically giving up in the second round, but then still came back and won that decision, so you got you got to give him a little bit of credit, but when, when you talk about war, a uh, 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 war-hardened veteran of this sport, you're talking about Eddie Alvarez, the guy ah. who fought at the highest level in every single one, one of these organizations in the entire world, the dude knows how to compete, and uh, it, it, it's exciting, you know, I think this this fight is, is a big fight because I mean, there's so many people out there who think Connor is so great, and I do think he's a great fighter, but they just, they're underestimating the uh, the will and heart of the offense. Yeah, I, and see, I totally agree. And, and with your assessment of Connor, I agree with that too. I was a little late to the Connor bandwagon. I, I thought that it was a little bit of hype, and, it, you know, it's such a hard division that felt jumps around. And you know, you guys are in the hardest weight class that there is, 155 or 145. I mean, those weights are. You got 10 John Joneses in each one of those weight classes. But uh, to your point on, on Connor, yeah, he's proved himself. You know, the way he came back against uh, Diaz, the man of the same same match in the same city, same amount of rounds, same opponent, same weight fight, and then lived up to it. He's the real deal. I just I just don't know if he can beat Eddie. I think there's a few guys that can definitely beat him, but maybe he can beat those guys too. I, I don't know. I, I am pretty excited for that match. Yeah, I mean, and it still remains to be seen. I think it's it's, it's good for Connor to uh, it was good for Connor to have lost that fight and then come back and like you said, same same opponent, same city, same weight, and then uh, you know make people eat their words. You know, with 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 uh, with this great platform that you get put on, you get a lot of naysayers, a lot of doubters, and, and sometimes it, it depends on what you're what you're motivated by. Do you want to prove those people wrong, or do you just want to continue to prove it to yourself? I think he he proved something to himself. He proved something to uh, to to a lot of fans in the in, uh, in the MMA industry. And it's uh, it's a big time fight, it's a big time stage. Madison Square Garden, and uh, you know it, it's going to be a good night for the UFC and a good night for all those guys. All right, so I got to put you on the spot here. So, so you came from the same room as Ben Askren and Tyron Woodley. You talked about those guys earlier. You are one of the few guys that mm. have seen those two go at it. Ben Askren is undefeated. Tyron Woodley is the world champion. But you know who is the better fighter. You know the answer to this question. Can you tell me? Actually, I, I, I've actually never been in the same mixed martial arts room with, with them, to be honest. I, I've never seen them spar. Um, when it came to wrestling, Ben was Ben was uh, head and shoulders about Tyron. Ben Ben has a way of of neutralizing every single one of your weapons. You look at Tyron Woodley; he's one of the most explosive, athletic, strongest, well-timed athletes in the entire world, in my opinion. And obviously, I'm a little bit biased, but um, Ben's the kind of guy that negates every single one of those things. It doesn't matter who you are, what day it is, how in shape Ben is. He's going to take away. 90% of your arsenal, 90% of your weapons, he's going to roll you up and he's going to pin you. Uh, I'm not saying that he would, he would go out there and pin Tyron in a, in a wrestling match, but I think he definitely three. won that, that wrestling battle. I can't no, say three. Fourteen and three. those guys sparring. You know, I think ben, ben has a very similar style when it comes to the mixed martial arts as he did with wrestling. He's going to grab you, he's going to pick you up, he's going to put you down, he's going to make you hate your life for as long as uh, the rest lets him, lets him torture you. So, 
Um, then you look at Tyron, the guy can knock out a, you know, he would knock out King Kong. You know, so it's, uh, it's an interesting, it's an, it would be an interesting matchup, and luckily I wouldn't have to pick, and I wouldn't have to see them fight, because I wouldn't want to get fight. Yeah, I, I could imagine, you know, I, I just love those little practice room stories. I, I came from a practice room, and so many people would, would pay on pay-per-view and they'd ask questions. Who'd win between Randy Couture and Dan Henderson? Well, I know the answer. I watched it happen, but I can never say. Who'd win between Evan Tanner and Matt Lindland? Or, you know, Matt Lindland and Dan Henderson. You know, just go through the mix. It's like, well, I know the answer to that. I watched them fight, but I will I will take it to the grave. You just, you can never tell those stories. And I'm starting to think that there's got to be, like, a moratorium on that. There has to be some amount of time that goes by where then it is okay to start telling those stories because they're really interesting. The practice room story, you know, particularly wrestling and the martial arts background, if we would have had cameras set up, I, I, if we would have documented some of that, it would you could sell it on pay-per-view right now. The most fascinating matches ever took place in the practice room. Absolutely. I mean, it, 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 the practice room, too, is such a, you know, it, it's so much different than the fight a lot of times. You know, there's some guys who, I mean, you can, I'm sure you can attest to this, you, you go to a practice room, you can watch a guy, and he looks like, he looks like a, a top 100 fighter in the world. But then you put him under the lights, you put him inside the cage, and he shines like a rock star, and he, he looks like the best guy in the world. And then there's the opposite, where some guys are practice room guys, and then they get under the lights, and they and they clam up, or they, they get scared, they, they don't open up, they, they beat themselves a lot of times. And there's, there's a, it's such a crazy sport, and, and it's so much different than football, baseball, basketball. It's so much different. And people, people who are just fans who have never really, who have never competed in wrestling or, or mixed martial arts, they don't, they don't understand the, the intricacies of, of, of the, the emotional roller coaster that we have had to go through from wrestling into mixed martial arts, and, and then as, as mixed martial artists, how much is on the line now? You know, back in wrestling, it was just. Oh, I, I just don't want to lose to the Oklahoma State guys because there are there are arch nemesis. I just don't want to lose to them because I'm Mizzou and Mizzou pride and this and that. Now you lose a fight, you're losing money, you're losing your, your you know you're taking a notch on your record, a loss of your record, you're, you're you're losing a little bit of your world ranking. Now now you got to get back a couple more fights so you can get another big money fight and this and that. So it's, there's so much more on the line. There's so much pressure in this sport. So it's, it's such an interesting crazy sport, both the sport of wrestling, which I love, honestly, more than the sport of mixed martial arts, if I'm completely honest, and, you know, it, it's just such an interesting thing, but I, I agree, if you had some, if you had some, uh, some video footage and some live feed footage of some of those sparring matches with some of these guys, it would be, uh, it would be pay-per-view worthy. Yeah, no, I agree. All right, let me throw another one out there at you, and, and this match isn't going to happen, sadly, but I, let me get your opinion. Grappling rules, okay, let's call it, let's call it EBI rules. Josh Barnett versus Neil Melanson. Yeah, Neil Melanson all day long. I want to see that match. Uh, I've always that. wanted to see that match. Man, I, I, uh, it's funny to me. I mean, Neil Neil talks about it, you know, every now and then. You know, Neil, Neil is one of the toughest men in the entire world. He's, he's dealing with, uh, you know, he, he's dealing with a illness that, that basically debilitates him sometimes. And this guy still shows up four, five, six hours a day training guys, private private lessons and, and running this, this team. And it's, it's just crazy what he has to go through. And we've talked about trying to get him in shape and, and get him back to competing. But the guy, is, he's so ridiculously good um, at, at catch wrestling. And, I mean, he's a, he's a perfect mixture of wrestling, catch wrestling, submission grappling, and jiu-jitsu. He's a perfect storm of all of that. And then Josh Barnett, on the other hand, you can say the exact same thing about him. Obviously, I haven't spent as much time with him as I have Neil, who's been my coach now for nine years, but it's uh, it's one of those matches that I would love to see. I would love to be able to be there, you know, match side for it, corner maybe, you know, call him off, whatever, you know, be his, be his corner man, but I don't know, it, it, it would be really, really cool if they could make that happen. I've always wanted to see that match too, and how it Gracie was even in at least brief discussions about putting that match on. And, yeah, when you talk about how tough Neil is, so, so Neil has every ailment you can think of. I mean, that guy, everything wrong that could be wrong, he's got one eye, but he's out there grappling every day, uh, risking his vision. That's pretty serious stuff. And, um, yeah, but he still goes in there. I asked him how he got his start. He was, he was training with a judo guy named uh, Gokar. And, like, his first day or his first week, they broke his ankle. They went in there, he was, just, he, was, he was just some big guy, they broke his ankle, but he came back the next day with a broken ankle. 
So Gokar started to, to look at him differently. He treated him the same. He still wasn't afraid to break this big guy's limbs and send him his own student. But he, he looked at him differently. He goes, okay, you are serious about this. You, you are into... Uh, you know, learning this craft, and, and that's really how we got it start. I've never really met anybody that that took jujitsu apart and then put it back together the way Neil did. I know he doesn't like to say he does jujitsu; he calls it catch wrestling. He's a big Billy Robinson guy, but uh, you know, essentially, he did. He is jujitsu's worst nightmare. He truly is. He everything he does is designed to stop that, shut it down, and, and advance position, much like Josh Barnett. So that's the match from the grappling standpoint. That's the match that I put. That my number one match. If I could see any match, it would be those two. Absolutely, I, I agree, and it, and it is so much. The greatest thing about Neil's, Neil's uh, system, and, and the greatest thing about a wrestler, my, myself, coming into this sort of mixed martial arts, is that he was my first grappling coach. He never, he never once showed me anything from pulling guard or any of this or any of that. It was all okay. You are a wrestler. You are a better wrestler than 99% of the guys that you're going to fight. You're going to go out there, you're going to pick them up, you're going to put them down. 15, and three, here's two. what we're going to do from the time that that guy's butt or back hits the ground to the time that you finish him. And his system is, for me, it, per it works perfect for me. For me, it's flawless. It's, it's anybody who wants to get into the sport of mixed martial arts, if you can look more at wrestling, more at catch wrestling, more at submission grappling, then you do be with you, and in my opinion, my, my biased opinion, I think you're going to have a leg up on, on the competition. Like you said, uh, Josh Barnett as well. So it would be such a, it would be such a ridiculous match, and I think people would look at it and they would think, mm. man, that, that's, so, that's such an unorthodox way to advance that position, because people would be, people would be looking at it from more of a grappling or uh, jiu-jitsu mindset, and then all of a sudden Barnett does this, that, and the other thing, or Neil, Neil would stop something with this, that, and the other thing, and then advance to a position more of a catch wrestling, submission grappling, uh, you know, kind of scenario, and, and it would look so much different. That's why, that, that would be the uniqueness of that match, you know? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I fully agree. Hey, so uh, give me an update on Missouri wrestling. What, uh, how, how's the team looking this season? They got a shot? I, I think, uh, yeah, I think we have four returning All-Americans. Um, obviously, Jaden Cox is an um, Olympic bronze medalist and uh, won nationals last year. I think he's going into his, I don't know, he's going into his junior season or his senior season. Only junior. He's got two, he's got yeah, two, two years, years left. Two years left. Yeah. What well, this guy has accomplished is crazy. And he was a little Missouri boy. He grew up right there in Columbia, Missouri, three and a half miles from the Hearn Center where we do all of our training. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and what, what, what Coach Smith has done, you know, I, I don't know, it's just a quick backstory. Whenever the Tyler Woodley's of the world and Ben Ashton, whenever they signed to Missouri, Mizzou was absolutely atrocious. You know, if there was 80 Division I schools, they were probably ranked in the, in the 60th, you know, 60th uh, range. You know, they were losing to Division three schools, Division two schools, NAIA schools. We, we lost a group of women with the year that Brian oh, was over. Oh. Lenny was just in AI so and we're supposed to be a division one program. Now, here we are, you know, I think Coach is like his 16th season or something like that. I don't know what it is, but he he has taken us from literally losing to NAI schools to a perennial top five, top seven, top ten teams in the world. And it's, it's so great what he has done. And he, he's not just focused on making these guys great wrestlers, he's focused on making these guys great wrestlers, uh, great great guys in the classroom and great guys in the world. So it's, it's a great program, and uh, I feel very fortunate to be a part of it. And uh, I, I'd love to be able to go to Nationals this coming year in March and, and hopefully make it out there and watch the boys go out there and buy some more national titles. Now, i got to give a correction. I told you, I told you Jayden's going to his junior year. I, you know, I forgot. He was a freshman national champion. I thought he was 3-1. I forget. Huh? He went 1-3-1. First, first uh, sure. third. So he's at, he is in his senior year, but yeah, to your point, Olympic medalist coming back on onto a college mat, you know, and then you got Schneider, the Olympic champion, coming back onto a college mat. Two and to your point. I mean, it's pretty exciting. It's a pretty good time to be a fan. Absolutely, and it's so cool. And, it, and I think, I mean, in life, success begets success. I mean, whenever people break these ceilings, they, they break these ceilings, and it's like, like we talk about two guys who just are coming off of Olympic gold or Olympic medals coming back into college, that, that, is, that is 
very, very far through the team that people do that. But once things are obtained like that, it gives these, these 14 year old kids who are in high school, they see the Jaden Cox of the world and the, the Snyders of the world. They say, man, if they can do it, I can do it. You know, it's so cool to see these guys put their goals into motion, put their dreams into motion, and work hard for something, and then achieve it before most of us even thought, you know, when I was, when I was a junior in college, I don't think I ever thought about going out there and, and winning an Olympic gold medal, you know, but that kind of stuff, even as a 30 year old now, we're talking about a, a 20 year old. 16, now, 3, 2, and to your point. Old, but I'm inspired by as a 30 year old, you know, it's just so cool to see these guys, what they're accomplishing, <clears> and it's, it's a great time to be uh, a, a wrestling fan, an American wrestling fan. And, uh, you know, it's, it's about time these guys continue Rats. to, uh, you know, step it up for the United States and for us to go out there and win medals out there on, on the end. 16-3-2. Yeah, I agree. Hey, so, Michael, did, did you, I assume you saw the news that George St. Pierre has uh, announced he's a free agent, which has to make all of us guys at Bellator assume George is going to come over. Is that going to happen? Give any insight on that. Is, is George even looking to fight again? And if he 